James Webb Space Telescope peers into the ghostly light of interstellar space. The faint light emitted by orphan stars that exist between the galaxies and galactic clusters is featured in the first deep field image produced by the Space Telescope. The first deep field image of the cosmos taken by the James Webb Space Telescope JWST has allowed scientists to study the faint, almost ghostly light from orphan stars that exist between galaxies and galactic clusters. Not gravitationally bound to galaxies, these stars are pulled free of their homes and drift into intergalactic space by the massive tidal forces generated between galaxies and clusters. The light emitted by these stellar orphans is called intracluster light, and it is so dim that it possesses just 1% of the brightness of the darkest sky it is possible to see over Earth. Not only could the study of this ghostly light from orphan stars reveal how galactic clusters form, but it could give scientists hints at the properties of dark matter, the mysterious substance that accounts for around 85% of the universe's mass. Dark matter doesn't interact with light, meaning scientists know it isn't the same as everyday matter made up of protons and neutrons. Its presence can currently only be inferred by its gravitational interactions, which literally prevent the stars and planets of galaxies from flying apart. The JWST sees the universe in infrared light, frequencies of electromagnetic radiation that let astronomers see galactic clusters differently from the picture painted in visible light. The sharpness of the JWST infrared images allowed Instituto de Astrofisica de Canarias IAC, researchers Maria Montes and Ignacio Trudillo to study the intracluster light from the galactic cluster SNHCSJ07 and 23.37327 in an unprecedented level of detail. This sharpness arises from the fact that JWST images of SNACSG07 and 23.37327, which is located around 4 billion light years from Earth in the constellation of Volans, are twice as deep as observations of the same cluster taken previously by the Hubble Space Telescope. In this study, we show the great potential of JWST for observing an object which is so faint. Research first author Montes said in a statement opens in new tab. This will let us study galaxy clusters which are much further away and in much greater detail. Studying this faint intracluster light required more than the sheer observing power of the JWST, however, meaning the team also needed to develop new image analysis techniques. In this work, we needed to do some extra processing to the JWST images to be able to study the intracluster light, as it is a faint and extended structure, Montes explained in the statement. That was key to avoid biases in our measurements. The data obtained by the scientists is a striking demonstration of the potential of intracluster light to reveal the processes behind the formation of structure in galactic clusters. Analyzing this diffuse light, we find that the inner parts of the cluster are being formed by a merger of massive galaxies, while the outer parts are due to the accretion of galaxies similar to our Milky Way, Monty said. The ghostly light in galaxy clusters. The Instituto de Astrofisica de Canarias in the Canary Islands, Spain, said this month, December 2, 2022, that it has finished the most complete analysis to date of the ghostly light in distant galaxy clusters. Astronomers call it intracluster light, that is, light between the galaxies. These astronomers said, in galaxy clusters, there is a fraction of stars that wander in intergalactic space because they are torn off by enormous tidal forces that are generated between the different galaxies in the cluster. The glow from these stars is called intracluster light, ICL, and it is extremely faint. Only 1% or less of the brightness of the darkest sky that can be observed from Earth. Seeing better from space. The extreme faintness of this light is one reason that space telescopes are so useful. Above the obscuring light of Earth's atmosphere, telescopes such as the James Webb Space Telescope, placed in orbit at Lagrange Point 2 earlier this year and now only beginning its scientific studies, can, for the first time, enable astronomers to study this ghostly light. They said the Webb's ability to see the universe in the infrared lets it gather information farther away from the center of a galaxy cluster than was previously possible using optical telescopes. 
In addition to this, because the intra-cluster stars follow the gravitational influence of the cluster as a whole rather than that of individual galaxies, the light from these stellar orphans presents an excellent way of studying the distribution of dark matter in these clusters. The JWST will let us characterize the distribution of the dark matter in these enormous structures with unprecedented precision and throw light on its basic nature. Study second author Trujillo added, Data obtained by the new James Webb Space Telescope was used by a recent study that has produced the most complete analysis to date of the intracluster light, the diffuse and faint light emitted by stars in galaxy clusters that are not gravitationally bound to any galaxy. The research gives new clues about the formation processes of galaxy clusters and the properties of dark matter. The study, which was entirely done by researchers at the Instituto de Astrofisica de Canarias, IAC was published in the specialized journal, the Astrophysical Journal Letters. In clusters of galaxies, there is a fraction of stars that wander off into intergalactic space because they are pulled out by huge tidal forces generated between the galaxies in the cluster. The light emitted by these stars is called the intracluster light, ICL, and is extremely faint. Its brightness is less than 1% of the brightness of the darkest sky we can observe from Earth. This is one reason why images taken from space are very valuable for analyzing it. Infrared wavelengths allow us to explore clusters of galaxies in a different way than with visible light. Thanks to its efficiency at infrared wavelengths and the sharpness of the images of the web, IAC researchers Maria Montes and Ignacio Trujillo have been able to explore the intracluster light from SMACS G0723.37327 with an unprecedented level of detail. In fact, the images from the web of the center of this cluster are twice as deep as the previous images obtained by the Hubble Space Telescope. In order to analyze this extremely faint, ghostly light, as well as needing the observational capability of the new space telescope, the researchers have developed new analysis techniques, which improve on existing methods. In this work, we needed to do some extra processing to the web images to be able to study the intracluster light, as it is a faint and extended structure. That was key to avoid biases in our measurements, says Maria. The James Webb Space Telescope is the next great space science observatory following Hubble. Designed to answer outstanding questions about the universe and to make breakthrough discoveries in all fields of astronomy, it is the most powerful infrared science observatory ever to be sent into space. Credit ESA ATG Media Lab. Thanks to the data obtained, the researchers have been able to demonstrate the potential of the intracluster light for studying and understanding the processes which go into the formation of structures as massive as clusters of galaxies. Analyzing this diffuse light, we find that the inner parts of the cluster are being formed by a merger of massive galaxies, while the outer parts are due to the accretion of galaxies similar to our Milky Way, she notes. But these observations not only offer clues about the formation of galaxy clusters, but also about the properties of a mysterious component of our universe, dark matter. The stars which emit the intracluster light follow the gravitational field of the cluster, which makes this light an excellent tracer of the distribution of the dark matter in these structures. 